Hi everyone, this is Robin from MyPinkStamper.com and I am I'm in charge, or actually I'm co-hosting a baby shower with a friend of mine, actually a couple friends of mine, and I'm in charge of the goodie bags and I'm also in charge of the uh, baby shower invitations, so I have a different video with the baby shower invitations. But it's, I can't remember the last time I've showed you how to make just Hershey's Nuggets for a goodie bag. So this is what I do. It's been so long since I have thrown um, or helped with a baby shower. We really don't have a lot of um, new babies in my um, ward or my church that we meet in. And so we're really excited. So we're going to make this a really grand affair. And I love to co cover Hershey's Nuggets. Now the fav my favorite one is the milk chocolate, chocolate um, with toffee and almonds. That's my favorite. So you're going to need a couple bags of Hershey's Nuggets. Each bag will make 15, um, <laughs> I can't even think of the name, little party favors. So it'll make 15. There's around 30. I used to use these all the time when I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I used to give them to um, people that booked workshops. I had little goodie things for them. Okay, so these, you're going to need some patterned paper that coordinates with your invitation or your party colors. And these are cut at one by three inch. And you can get a lot out of one sheet. I think we almost got, I think we got enough for both packs. I can't remember. I say we, I'm the one that's making them. So I think I, <laughs> I don't really remember. Okay, so one by three inches. And I'm just using some adhesive. And I'm going to do the adhesive in three spots. One on both sides and then in the middle. Now, this is a very thin, I just got this paper at a craft store. If you're using the thicker, it's really hard to do cardstock unless you have really good adhesive because cardstock is very thick. Or if you're using the thick pattern paper, it's sometimes too thick for this too because it'll pop off later. And if you want to use the stronger glues, you can, they just take a while. And I don't know if I'd use anything that's liquid that might, you know, go through into the chocolate or that has a little bit of fumes to it because they're going to be in a cellar bag. So I'd be very careful about that. Okay, so do you guys see what I'm doing? I'm talking as I'm doing it. <laughs> I just kind of put this on the top so it stays there. And then I wrap it around. Do you guys see how this is just wrapped around? So that's it. Those are your personal little candy bars that you can make for any occasion. And what we, you can also stamp on um, an Avery label, and that fits around here perfect. I used to do that for Stampin' Up! workshops all the time, too. Now, for this step, all we're going to do is open up. This is a 3 by 5 cello bag. I get my bags at clearbags.com, and just look for the flat cello bags with no flap that are around 3 by 5 inches. You know, sometimes they might be a little bit more, a little bit less. Or Stampin' Up! also carries them. Sometimes you can see them at your craft store. I don't think they're, I like these ones. I like the really, you know, crisp cello. Okay, so that's it. I just have two in here. And then I'm going to show you now how to make a cute little topper for the top of this. I usually will fold it over. You can also fit four, four nuggets in here if you want to have a little bit more. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do two um, for this project. All right. Now we're ready to start with the second part of our project, and we're actually going to make the topper for the goodie bag. So remember, we just did this a second ago, and we're going to set this aside. And we're going to be using the cuddle bug, and this is a cuddle bug embossing, embossing folder. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to be using a Cricut cartridge called Storks Delivery, and this is exclusive through Creative Memories. So you need to go to creativememories.com to find a consultant. We're going to be using regular staple, stapler, of course mine's pink, right? And yes, all my tools are pink, most of them. And we're using just two colors for the, we're going to do a baby onesie. So we're using dark brown and we're using blue. And this is actually coordinating with the baby shower invitation that I will be showing you on a video in a few days after this one. And then for the card topper, we're using brown, white, the pattern paper, the same pattern paper that we used for the Hershey's Nuggets. And we're going to also be using Sweet Baby Stamp Set from My Pink Stamper. And we'll go ahead and get started. So get out your Cricut and get your cartridge out. Now if you don't have this cartridge and you have a baby onesie or if you're using, you know, some sort of baby foots. I know uh, Doodle Charms has some really cute baby 
uh, images on them and some other cartridges do as well. So let's head on over to the Cricut. The page that we're going to be using on Stark's Delivery is page 22. Now we're cutting the little boy onesie. Now there's three pieces to this onesie. There's the solid color that also has the image you're going to layer on the front. Then there's the the layer that goes on top that's going to make, this one's actually going to be the hanger and the star. So you need, we're going to use dark brown for that one. This right here would normally be white, and if you can see, they have this in white, so you can tell which one that's going to be. And then this one normally goes on top, so you can see the stitches through it. We're not using the stitched one. We're just using the solid and the solid. That way I don't have to worry about a bunch of little pieces that I'm going to have to make sure they all poke out and everything. Um, just going to be really simple. That's the way I do things. And I need to make about, I don't know, 50 of these, so I need to make sure they're super simple. Okay, I have my paper on my mat. I'm going to load it in my machine. If you're new to the Cricut machine and you have a Cricut Expression or a Cricut Expression 2 or Imagine or any of the smaller Cricuts, just go ahead and press your load mat. They're all pretty similar. If you're using the Cricut Expression 2, you'll have a touch screen. All right, now we're going to be cutting this. I'm thinking that we're going to cut it... I don't know. It's going to have to be pretty small. So I'm thinking two and a quarter, and I have not tried. What you'll learn about my videos, if you're new, is I, I try it on film first, and we'll see if it works. We, we're going to do it together. So that is two and a quarter, and the one that I need is the second button over. The newer cartridges will have a little overlay picture underneath the images, and it has a little red highlight to show you where the button is, which I think is genius. I love it. Okay, so let's go ahead and press that. And we're going to see if this is too small or too big. I have my blade set at six. And I have my, let's see if that's weird. Uh, pressure's high, speed's high. Okay, let's go ahead and unload that. I'm going to measure this up. Now the hard part when you're doing smaller, more intricate cuts is if they have a smaller piece on them, sometimes that gets a little tricky, but this one looks great. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that is going to be perfect. So it gives me room for my image, my sentiment. We're going to do the sentiment on the bottom, and that is just going to be perfect. I think it might be, let's see, it's going to be great. So two and a quarter. Now go ahead and put your mat back in and press load last. And move your blade over, and we're going to press shift. Actually, we're not going to press shift. Erase that. We're going to press layer one because we're using the layer one images right here and it coordinates right here, layer one, and press it again. And that'll give you the solid part of the onesie. And then we'll go ahead and put this together. Okay, we're going to go ahead and ugh, get this. We're going to score this so it's easier to fold. This is for the actually top part of the topper and it's Three inches, uh, three and a quarter by five inches. Now my bag is three by five, so we want to make sure that's just a little bit about a quarter bigger, and then I wanted it to be in two and a half inches tall. So you can do it as tall as you want. So you just have to mess with the dimensions. But now we're going to score this over so it's easier to fold. So I'm going to score it at two and a half. And scoring, you can use, um, you know, a bone folder. Scoring just means you're making a crease, so it's easier to fold. We're going to go ahead and... I don't even need to fold this over. Sometimes I would fold this over. But you don't have to with this one. We're going to put that right there. And we're going to put... You can put as many staples as you want. I try to limit it to make it easier. So I'm just doing one staple right there. So I have my little nuggets in here and I've got my stapler. Now let's go ahead and make the top. I'm running out of time here, I think. We're going to use our cuddle bug here. A cuddle bug is super, super awesome. This just actually gives you like um, an embossed, embossed um, texture to your paper. So we're going to emboss the white part that goes on top. And this is cut at three inches by, let me think for a minute, um, two and a quarter. And we're using the same embossing folder that we'll show you uh, later, <laughs> that I'll show you on another video. 
that went along with the baby shower invitation. I know you guys are going to die to know what the invite looks like. Well, let me tell you, it's super simple. So when I do that video, you're going to say, oh, that was easy. Yeah, totally easy. Okay, I just ran that through. I put my A plate on the bottom, and then this is sandwiched between the B plates. Take this out, and look, I have so super awesome embossed paper. Isn't that just so cool? And this is going to be a go across the bottom. And we're going to stamp on this. So I was trying to decide what we're going to stamp. Let me kind of lay this out. Let me lay this out and see how I want it to look. Dun, dun, dun. Um, let me see. I might actually cut that down a little bit. Um, I love that little saying, little one. I think I'm just going to do little one. Little one down here. And we're going to use some brown ink. And I just brought a big block in here, so we're going to use a big block. You can use any size block as long as it covers it. So you just want to make sure that you don't wobble it from side to side. So ink it up. Let's put little one down here. These are my pink stamper stamps. Sweet baby. Okay, we have little one on there. So cute. I try to design my stamps so they're actually sayings that I would use on projects. So if you look through my stamp line, they're all ones that I would use all the time. Okay. I'm going to cut this down. I had this at one and a quarter by three inches. I'm going to cut it down to one inch. So it's just going to be one. Did I say, whoops, that's my scoring blade. Let's take that off and use my cutting blade. Okay, so what did I say this was? This is one by, this is one by three. So actually what you can do is this is the same size that you're using for the labels. That was easy, isn't it? Wasn't it? The same size you're using for your labels. And I kind of got a little bit it's a little rough right here, but we're going to cover that up so it doesn't matter. Okay, let's use our adhesive. And we're going to put this on the bottom. Right here. And we're going to use some of some ribbon. I have some polka dotted ribbon that I love. I love all sorts of ribbon. Oh, my kids are playing in here. So. <laughs> Maybe I should forward this part for you guys. Okay. They love to play with my mommy's craft stuff. Well, wouldn't you? I love to play with my stuff. <laughs> I think that's fine. Okay. I'm going to wrap this around. It's just a strip. And also it's polka dotted. And I was thinking of using the solid, but I thought, oh, polka dotted would be really cute. Just going to tape. This is called the cheater method. My pink stamper cheater method. That I introduced to the community. The name for it, like, I don't know, five years ago, my first video, three and a half years ago, I don't remember, <laughs> but you're really not cheating. I just like that name. Okay, we're going to put that right there. And since we're using an cuddle bugged, an embossed piece of paper, you want to make sure that you do four solid rows of adhesive around it so it will stay on there and not get all wobbly. Okay, put this here, and then we just need to add this on with a pop dot. Let me go get one really quick. We are almost through with this project. We're just going to use, I'm going to use one pop dot up at the top. And I'm going to add that up here. So cute. Now if you wanted to, actually I see my error. I am going to add another pop dot down here. So it doesn't, there you go. There we go. So it stays nice. And you could leave it like that or you could add a ribbon. Let's see if we'll be able to see the stamp because if we are not going to be able to see the stamped image, you turn it this way. Okay, pull it through. Now because we haven't, um, this is patterned only on one side, when you pull the bottom one through, you're going to twist it when it comes out. This is kind of a small piece of ribbon. You're going to twist it so that your pattern shows up. Isn't that cute? We're going to cut that real quick. I don't have any good scissors in my office today, so just cross your fingers. Yay! Does that work? Yay! <laughs> I usually have sharp ones, but they disappear around here a lot, if you know what I mean. My kids just love scissors. Alright, 
So this is going to be my goodie bag at the baby shower that I'm co-hosting. And I will show you the matching, coordinating invitation in just a few days. So keep on a lookout for that. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.